my crisp. Well, pray. Yep. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord is good and his mercy endured forever. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I love you. I thank you for your divine power, your strength. Your tender kindness is better than life. And we're gathered tonight to hear a word from you. God, we have hustled and bustled during the day and we ask that you will calm our nerves, settle our spirits, that we may hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Now, God, if there's anything that we've done or said or thought that was inconsistent to your will and your way, have mercy. Forgive us for our trespasses. Keep us from all evil. Purge us from our iniquities and blot out our transgressions that we may be the people of God that you called us to be. Thank you, Lord, for calling us out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Thank you for those that have come tonight from far and near, God, and I pray that you will send a word to them that will encourage their hearts. Strengthen them, Lord God, as only you can. And we thank you. We bless you. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Amen. Let's get to the word of God really quickly tonight. Those of us that are watching on the web, I pray that you will share this broadcast and those of you that are all over the world, I see many of you that are on tonight and we're so grateful for your presence. Share your city and your state and let's give God praise for our viewers online, y'all that's watching us from all over the world, trying to get back into swing of being in the house of God on Wednesdays. And I'm grateful to God for the opportunity to share the word of God anytime. And I'm appreciative of the calling. Acts chapter 22. If this is your first time um, even visiting online tonight, put it in the chat section, my first time. And if there's anybody in here for the first time, let me see your hands. I can't see that well, Chris, if you can give me a little lighting. I want to see their face, see if they laughing or mugging at me tonight. <laughs> Glory be to God. I'm so grateful to God for what God is doing. Acts chapter, chapter 22. I'm going to read 15 verses tonight. Man, I enjoyed myself Sunday morning. Can you say amen? Sunday morning was absolutely phenomenal how God will move in us and through us and by us. I'm excited about the move of God in our church. Uh, can you look at somebody and say, we grow here, we grow here. Man, when I look around and see the anointing that's on you and how you can give God praise in spite of situations and circumstance, it's amazing to see how God will strengthen an individual um, when they're standing under pressure. And so uh, when you understand the word, you can stand under anything. Let me say that one more time. When you understand the word, understand, you can stand under anything, whatever pressure it is that you're dealing with. I'm going to read 15 verses. I didn't plan. I was trying to figure out how to get around reading all these verses. But um, thank God for the word of God. Amen. Y'all been doing all right? How has this week been for you? Been challenging already or has just been full of joy? Good, pretty good? All right, glory to God. 
um, I'm thankful to God. Next Wednesday, um, we we won't be. I think it's next Wednesday or it's next, Wednesday. next Wednesday. We will not be here um, for midweek service. Our spring conference starts next week at the Temple of Praise, and so I'd like you guys to go over there with me, yeah. if you can. 700 Southern Avenue, that's Southeast Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. We have a um, a uh, conference Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and I'm preaching Sunday morning, but you come here Sunday morning, all right? I'm preaching there at nine, right? I'm preaching there at nine, but I will leave straight from there, and I'm coming right over. I ain't even gonna change clothes. I'm coming right on over here. Amen. Amen. So y'all make sure y'all light it up really good, so when I get here, I won't have to do a lot of work. All right? So I plan on leaving there around ten fifteen. Maybe I get here about ten thirty, quarter to eleven. And so I need you guys to pray for me, all right? So you don't have to go over there with me Sunday. You come to church Sunday, all right? And I will be here for the 10 o'clock service. But next Wednesday, um, I said we will have Bible study this whole week. And, um, you know, it's changed because I didn't mark in the calendar that the conference was this week. And I want all of you to come over there with me so we can celebrate our spring conference. Amen. That's what we connected to. Our covering is there. Bishop Staples is my covering. I'm connected there. I'm a bishop in that organization, a fellowship of churches, and it's my duty responsibility to be there. And I will be there all week. Um, that's totally up to you. Uh, your mandate is to be there Wednesday night when I'm there, right? If you decide to stay there on um, Thursday and Friday, then fine. I will be there. It's got some great preachers going to be there. If you want to make it all week with me, that's fine. But that's where you'll find me every uh, week next week. God is good. I'm sorry. sorry. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. And um, we'll have more details Sunday. We'll make sure we put some stuff on the screen for you so you can get everything you need to be in place. All right. Tell somebody you want to be in place. You want to be in place. Remember I said last week that the lost coin was out of place and out of service, right? We want to always be in place so we can serve. Say that, in place so that we can serve. Oh, my God, the hammers just made it in. We can start church, y'all. Bishop Vaughn used to do that to me every time. I came in a second late. He's talking about we can start now that I'm here. Glory to God. So excited to God to be in the house of God. Um, of course, Wednesday, I'm sorry, Thursday, Friday. Let me get my dates right. They, I ought to have some little notes, but, you know, I'm good with that. Friday, we have our uh, pre-Mother's Day service. Um, and I'm still a little jealous over the turnout y'all had at the Copper Canyon. And man, you know, at least I got some salmon and some spinach and potatoes after the fact. But thanks be to God, I'm excited that you women had a great time. I need all of you back in the back, please come up. Would you please just come up? I promise you I do not bite. And I'm not going to preach hard, so I will not spit. Okay, I'm going to talk and I'm going to relax tonight. So I need all of you to come up, that sort of stuff. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm going to start coming down on the floor so Chris will start getting the, ca the cameras a little bit um, focused for the floor because it's a little bit more intimate and so that I can conversate with you guys. Can you look down your row and say, I know you got a testimony. I know you got a testimony. And I know you don't look like, tell them, and I know you don't look like, don't look like. what they said about you. Amen. I know. Somebody can testify that God has been good to you. Ain't that right? God has been good in spite of us. He's been good. Acts chapter 22. And Sunday will be uh, our Mother's Day service. And um, I'm a special guest preacher. Sunday morning, so bring everybody you can. Church always filled on Mother's Day. Father's Day is still slim. <laughs> you know, Father's Day out of the holidays are listed 22nd. 
They got Halloween before the fathers. You mean to tell me goblins are more important than dads? And so uh, we will have a good time Sunday. So bring a friend, pick one, pick up one, be responsible for one, duplicate one, disciple one, that God will be pleased with your, your service. Acts chapter 22. We ready, Chris? I'm reading 15 verses. You guys can sit with me today. All right. Brethren, men, fathers, Hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence. And he said, I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus, a city of Sicilia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day and I persecuted this way unto death binding and delivering into prisons both men and women as also the high priest doth bear me witness and all the estate of the elders from whom also I received letters unto the brethren and went to Damascus to bring them which were their bond to Jerusalem for to be punished and it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come Nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell into the ground. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spoke to me. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, arise and go to Damascus. And there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. Verse 11. And when I could not see for the glory of the light being led by uh, the hand of them that were with me, I am came to Damascus and uh, one Ananias, a devout, according to the law, man, that was there having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there came unto me and stood and said unto me brother Saul received thy sight in the same hour I looked up and upon him and he said the God of our fathers have chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth for thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. That's the reading of God's word, 15 verses from the book of Acts chapter 22. Give God praise for the word of the Lord. For those of you that are tuning in right now, I need you to share the broadcast and all of us right now that got smartphones and if you don't have a smartphone, you can see Herman over there. He's giving out free phones at the service. <laughs> I want you to share the broadcast really quickly. And when you share it, um, I want you to put your own caption in your share. If you're hearing me, we only stream it tonight, I believe, from Twitter, um, YouTube, and Facebook. And on the website, of course. Um, put in the chat section, I got a testimony too. I got a testimony too. Father, help me now, God, as I take my time and talk to your people. I've talked to you concerning them. Now, God, allow me to talk to them concerning you. Help me. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you one more time give God praise for the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. That was some cheap old praises today, I tell you. <laughs> my God, I, I, I hear better praises in my den on Wednesday night than that. Um, I've discovered uh, that the best thing that we can offer our world is not learned arguments, but a personal testimony of what God has done for us. And the people of God says amen. amen. 
I'm looking at people that have come over great trial. If I were to give you this mic right now and allow you to tell a short story, a, a short novella, a saga of your life, there probably wouldn't be one dry eye in this place. If you want to get honest about it, there's some things that you've done you wish you could undo, but God still brought you out of where you were. Come on, say amen. There were some roads that you traveled. Amen. That if I would put your best day on the screen, it probably would still be embarrassing. But thanks be to God, God hid you in the cleft of the rock. Ain't that good? Not only did he hide you, but he protected you. And the reason why I can say that he protected you is because you're here tonight. And I'm grateful that you're here tonight. And that you got a testimony and let me declare this really quickly that many of you going to encourage thousands of people because of what you went through let me say that one more time because you did get excited i said many of you that's listening online and in here going to be an encouragement to thousands because of what you went through You've been through hell and high water, hardship and trial, but thanks be to God, you're still here. I believe that revival will come to America not by powerful preachers with eloquent arguments, but when church members start telling the story of what Jesus means to them. I mean, I believe that the power is in the pew. When we begin to activate the believers to not be ashamed of their story, and start sharing their faith wherever they go, we can turn the world upside down. If Jesus took 12 dilapidated men and turned the world, the world upside down, surely we could take 50 and turn Landover upside down. I mean, if we get up outside of ourselves and begin to boldly share where you were and where you are today, you will see transformation right in front of your eyes. But here's the really, the, the, the cusp of your testimony. When you're sharing your story, please do not omit where God found you. I mean, I know you're doing good now. You're degreed and you have uh, great relationships. Your network is strong. You look good. You smell good. You're feeling good. You're eating good. It's all good. But, but there was a time Amen. You didn't look that good. There was a time your smile didn't look as bright. There was a time when you thought you would never stop crying. But somebody can testify even online because y'all not talking. Won't God dry your tears? See, that's the testimony. I thought I would never cry over that man leaving me. But thanks be to God. God equipped me to get over. I thought I was going to lose my mind when that woman walked out on me. But when she walked out, I called on God. And I can testify, he came to see about me, Chris, in the midnight hour. Oh, my God, my, 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 my pillow was wet with tears. Glory be to God. But woke up in the next morning, and everything was all right. Can you type amen if you believe that? Everything was all right. A Christian should talk to the Lord about his neighbors and then talk to his neighbors about the Lord. The story of Paul conversion, my brothers and sisters, must be important for it is found several times in the New Testament. Three times in the book of Acts alone. It's found in the ninth chapter when Luke tells the story from a historical perspective. And then it's told again here in Acts 22 where Paul defends himself before a Jewish audience. Then not only that, it was told in Acts 26 where he defends himself before the Gentile Roman government. Um, Festus and Phyllis. So I want to take this moment tonight. Ray Nail, it's good to see you, baby. Your hair look cute. At what we can learn about being an effective testimony for Christ. Are y'all ready to get into this? Yes. All right. The first thing I want to talk about is on the screen. He established common ground um, with his listeners. He established common ground with this listless. Y'all know I'm getting excited. I put one foot down, I'm getting excited. I, I need to get my leverage going on. 
That's very important that you find commonality with people so you'll find a relevant point so the playing field can be even so they won't feel like they're beneath you. Come on, say amen. amen. Which they're not beneath us. Paul began by finding common ground. Shout common ground. Amen. With those whom um, he wants to share his testimony. He says in verse 1, it's on the screen. He says, brothers and esteemed fathers, listen to me as I offer my defense. When they heard him speaking in their own language, the silence was even greater. And the people of God says amen. amen. Did y'all see that? Yes. The own common ground, the commonality. Paul begins by telling them that he was once just like them. He was once just like them. A low down, good for nothing, scum of the earth, backbiting, whoremongering sinner, on a way as hell, hole chasing, free basin, cocaine snipping, wine nipping, pill chopping, weed chopping, cigarette sucking, pipe puffing devil. I was once just like them. And some such were you. So you ought never, y'all gonna make me preach. You ought not never get so arrogant and forget where you come from. I had a long list and you ought to put yourself somewhere. Hey Amen. You may never been a free baser, but you've been a whole chaser. Yeah. <laughs> and if he wasn't your husband and he was sleeping with some other dudes, he was a hoe. Come on, say amen. And some of y'all got messed up because I said the word hoe. Look at that religious spirit. <laughs> oh. Glory be to God. So he found commonality. He said, brothers and esteemed fathers, listen to my defense. He began to speak in their native language. This is where I want you to get. He addresses them as brothers and he speaks to them in their native language. That's important. Why, Bishop? There is a specific language for a specific group of people. And sometimes church folk can sound too deep and miss your audience common ground. You don't, 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 don't go around the hood and you don't know the language. When I was teaching, when I was teaching effective street ministry, we had literally a book called Ebonics so we could understand the language. You know, I feel like getting up and walking, but I'm going to sit here and I'm going to be cool. <laughs> Let me uncross my leg. I don't want to get too comfortable in this full fit. Uh, uh, we had this book that gave uh, different acronyms and different um, responses in the hood that you could just say certain things and it would take the, the edge off. Amen. You, you have to not only know the language, you got to know the dress code. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm not going around the hood with no suit on. They may think I'm FBI. Yes. Where's something? Where, come on, y'all. I'm just being, I'm being natural. I'm being calm. You don't want to come there deep, speaking in tongue, being barbaric, acting all deep. You need to find the language of the people. Glory be to God. We, what we call that is the right bait. Yes. Come on, say amen. Amen. And so he knew the language, he knew the lingo. And sometimes in this modern day to deal with young brothers that you think may be harmful, you know, you might need to call them nephew. Yeah. Nephew, come on, man, you know, your, you know what I'm saying? They might be like, you right, aunt, and leave you alone. They might get ready to rob you, nephew, you don't want to do that, man. Come on, nephew. Amen. Some Y'all better listen to me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You going around the hood stopping at the hammer code. They still got hammer code. Stop it. <laughs> Amen. So you got, to, you got to know the language. Paul knew the language of the people because he been there. Glory be to God. So you can't be acting all sedity and, and sanctimonious and deep and, and go around there. And you know how sometimes we as deep Christians, um, not in our church because we're the liberty house. Amen. But, but other churches... They got this look on their face that, that says they deep like, like they smell something or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? And so you can't do that around the hood. And then vice versa, you got to know the language. You can't go to the marketplace 
and talking to business people acting all wretched and ghetto. So we have to be strategical, strategical. We have to be wise. We got to send the right people in the right field. Glory to God. I'm thankful to God I'm pretty rounded. You know, I can go into a boardroom and speak proper grammar. Or I can go around the hood and cuss you out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm too. <laughs> no, I ain't kidding. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> um, one, one day, one day, this is a story. This is an illustration. Sometimes I try to give you guys life stories to let you know that I'm not perfect. But I give you life stories. About 20 years ago, I was a preacher in, in um, Arca Safety Christian Church. And there was a lot of hood dudes in there. And it was this one dude that was always late, always just complaining, always never show up, always making excuses. Little young dude, little ragged little dude. And we would always try to, you know, pull up, well, come on, man, you got to come back, man. You got to do the right thing, man. You got to be consistent. You want to be responsible and committed so you can grow. We was using that approach of being, trying to be tactful and loving, da da da. I got tired of I went off on I said, you lazy son of a biscuit eater. You need to get up off of your ash can, right, and be a man, you suck up. You know he start coming to church every week. <laughs> I'm not advising you to do that. But that's what the language he understood. When I went at him raw, on that level, now it wasn't in front of everybody. I pulled him up. I pulled him up by myself and went up like, man, for real though? Like, come on, stop acting like a, you know what I mean? Get yourself together. I cussed him out. Slim was every week. <laughs> when he came there, but I was like, that's right, champ. I see you. I see you. And he was there every week. So I'm not telling you to go cuss people out. That was just a true story. If I'm lying, God can strike me dead. I cussed him out, but he came to church. God forgive me. <laughs> but cussing brought him to the Lord. <laughs> uh, that was his native language. <laughs> and, oh, uh, now, nah, so, I'm going to stay right here. Some of y'all looking all deep like you forgot how to cuss. <laughs> like you ain't forgot how to cuss. Let's, let's be honest. No, don't raise your hands. Raise your eyebrows. When was the last time you cussed? <laughs> I got the right church. When I first started preaching, see, see Ray, I was in N.A. real strong before I start, got in ministry. And they, they got me to speak at a lot of meetings because I was loud. I was aggressive. I was talk to God thing, you know. And so people wouldn't fall asleep on me because I was loud, like, you know. And telling my story. And I was cussing when I was telling my story. I tell my story, I'm cussing. I'm, hey, and when I was out there in the street, I'm telling you, if I had to get my, uh, uh, that's the gut. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And when I started preaching, I said, Lord, I can't go in the pulpit and say, you MFs need to get saved. I'm going over here. I said that. And so I had to work on cussing. And, and right now, you probably heard this story. So I had a, a, a job at the hardware store, and part of my job at the plumbing department was to cut glass. And I'm working on, you know, I had got my sermon. I had got my uh, initial sermon date for my pastor, and I was working on my sermon, you know, putting little fittings, plumbing fittings together, working on my sermon, preaching in the, I was preaching in the aisles, doing that work, just trying to get my message together. And so a person came in and wanted some glass cut, and I put that big old, uh, three quarter inch glass. They wanted a 50 50 big piece of glass. I put it on that and I dropped it and cut my finger. Boy, I got the cuss. Got I got the cussing. I said, Lord, forgive me. Because I was working hard on my tongue. And eventually, you know, I, I was able to tame my tongue. Um, but I still know how to cuss. Amen. And I'm going to tell you right now, God, God forbid and the Spirit of God to keep me, you push the wrong button, and I ain't taking care of myself, you might get a few native words. You know what I'm saying? Glory be to God. But let me move from there. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? 
Tell somebody, I'm delivered from cussing. I'm delivered from cussing. I'm delivered from God. Yeah, speak those things that are not as though they were. <laughs> here, here's the good news. Here's the good news. God saved us from cussing. If cussing ain't going to send you to hell. Now, what is a cuss word anyway? Who made it up? Who, who made curse words up? Now, let me say this, and I'm going. What is cursing? I know what I'm got, about to do. I probably can't say this in the pulpit online because they, people probably, they, they get what I take online these days and just cut it out and say he's cussing and put me all on the shade room. So I saved that. I'm taking my time. See, if I was standing up, I'd probably been rushing and said it. But, but, but let me try to make it uh, practical. Man, that's my F, M, F, man. That's my M, F right there, man. I'm telling you that's my M, F. Is that cussing, is that cursing a person or she's an ugly devil? Did y'all get that? Um. Man, that D girl off the chain, I love her, man. That D brother, man, can do it, man. That's my God right there. I can't stand his guts with, with his nasty self. Y'all catch all that on y'all way to Papa Do's. Knowing the common language. The Bible says the silence was even greater. Why? Because now they want to listen. Because you met them where they are. That's why you ought not never, that's why I always tell my story. Because it reminds me where I can be today. I'm not too, I'm not far removed. 30 years seemed like last week. Yeah. It seemed like I just had to crack pipe in my mouth. Yeah. And I've been clean 30 years. Yeah. It doesn't take but one hit yeah. and I'll be still in your pocketbook. Yeah. If I hit some crack, y'all better get every one of these cameras out of here. Or we'll be right there on Landover Road, <laughs> right by the 7-Eleven, that pawn shop. Because one is too many. A thousand is never enough. And let me pause parenthetically to push into this passage in the period from the pulpit. Some of y'all may never been addicted on drugs, but you got some sort of addiction. Porno. Come on, say amen. Your eyes wander. Amen. Some of y'all attracted to food. You get depressed and eat up everything. <laughs> now your life become unmanageable because now you got heart problems. Amen. Amen. Any addiction, anything that makes your life unmanageable becomes an addiction. And you, I don't know why I'm out here. I'm just talking to y'all. I'm giving y'all life. Addictions move. You, you have to be aware of the movement of addiction. When I stop getting high, when I stop copping, I start shopping. Right? Like I need another black shoe in my life. Have you ever took, I may be the only one, some of y'all not like me. It, it may be only 13 of us like this in here today. Have you ever bought something and you really didn't have the money and you juggled with it with a bill? Whatever you juggled it for was your addiction. <laughs> I'm gonna get this pocketbook. Come on, say amen. Got that pocketbook? Spent seven hundred dollars, and he got seven dollars to put at it at the event. I'm by myself. Any of my daughters in here like shoes? Just y'all like shoes. I'm gonna find out what your addiction is. I'm gonna find out. 
I know you, I know you got something. Anybody struggling with an addiction right now? Just be honest. Lift up your hands. I'm struggling with something. A personal, personal thing. Now, some addictions are good. Go over to God. Some of us, some, somebody say, well, well, I read the word all the time. That's a great addiction. But if you read the word and ain't paying attention to your wife, that's a bad thing. Amen. Eventually, that word is going to tell you to go get her. <laughs> go get her. For somebody else will. Preach, Bishop. I, I looks like I look like I ain't gonna get nowhere near this. But let's go. I'm gonna take my time. I ain't. I don't have no rush. I don't have nowhere to go. Um, but eight o'clock. we we'll, eight o'clock. The Bible study power hours. We we be done at eight o'clock. If y'all haven't shouted Sunday and the rest of this week, you won't shout the night. You won't dance the night. You already got your holler in on your way here. I promise you. Paul begins by telling them that he was once just like them. He addresses them as brothers. And he speaks to them in their native language. Not only did, did, did Paul find common, common ground, rather, number two, Paul did not glory fire in his past life of sin. He did not glorify we taught to do that, not to glorify your story. Especially in drugs, we have a tendency, a proclivity to glorify like it was like this euphoric, nice thing, like we had money and we was doing stuff. No, it was horrible. Sometimes when you hear a testimony today, you don't know if they're testifying to the glory of God or glorifying in their past sin. Look at Acts 22, verses 3 to 5. Look at Paul as he says this. He says, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, yet brought up in the city at the feet of Gabriel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God as ye all are this day. Here it is. And I persecuted this way until the death Binding, he ain't glorifying his past. Binding and delivering into prisons, both men and women. As also the high priest doth bear me witness in all the estate of the elders from which also I received letters unto the brethren and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. Paul literally was executing or having Christians executed, going into houses, dragging them out. Watch this. And thought he was doing God a favor. So he didn't go in telling you, listen, all this great stuff that he was because he was a great man. Paul resume was absolutely phenomenal. Circumcised on the eighth day from the tribe of Benjamin. Pharisee of the Pharisee. He was zealous concern, concerning the law. But he was like, man, I've read the glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. My past was my past, and it was an ugly past. I was executing Christians. I was persecuting um, those that God had called out of the darkness into the marvelous light. I was going into your home dragging you out. I was on my way to Damascus Road to drag Christians to be executed, and I bumped into the Lord. Here's my place to shout. If y'all don't want to shout, I ain't going to talk to you. When you mess with the church, you're going to bump into the Lord. Amen. He was on his way to mess with the church, to drag out the church and bump into the Lord Jesus Christ. While thou are you persecuting me, glory be to God. And the Bible says that Paul admitted what he was doing because he didn't want to glorify his past. And continuing in verse 19, he says this. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believeth on thee. Beat them up. Go ahead, son. And when the blood of that martyr, Stephen, y'all remember when they beat Stephen, the deacon Stephen, was shed, I also was standing right there and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that was slew him. And the people of God said, amen. amen. Paul tells of his past and he doesn't glorify in it. It was nasty. It was ugly. And I don't have no, no problem telling it. Because the ugly it was, the better it looks now. Amen. 
God Almighty. If God can reach that far and get me that far, certainly he can get you if you're that far. He will reach down to the uttermost. Y'all going to make me preach on this Wednesday night and pull you up. Good God Almighty. From where you once was. Look at the Message Bible, Acts 22. Let me read it in the Message Bible because y'all didn't get excited like I thought y'all would. Maybe you reflected on where you were. That's a good place to be. He continued, I am a good Jew, born in Tarsus, in the province of Sicilia, but educated here in Jerusalem under the exacting eye of Rabbi Gamaliel. Thoroughly instructed in our religious traditions and have always been passionately Lee on God's side, just as you are right now. Look at how he's talking to him. I went after anyone connected with this way. Went at them with all my might, ready to kill for God. He thought he was doing God a favor, as he right. Did you see that? I rounded up men and women, dragging out women, right and left, and had them thrown in prison. You can ask the chief priest or anyone in the high council to verify this, they all knew me very well. Y'all see that? Yeah. Then I went off to our brothers in Damascus, armed with official documents, authorizing me to hunt down the followers of Jesus there, arrest them, and bring them back to Jerusalem for sentencing. He did not glorify in his past. He telling them just how it is. Tell somebody, tell it like a T.I. is. Then, then he goes on in 19 and 20 again. Let me read it in the book of Acts chapter 22, the message, so you can get a clear picture. At first, I objected. Who has better credentials? They all know how obsessed I was with hunting out those who believed in you, beating them up in the meeting places, coming to church and beating them up and throwing them in jail. And when you, your witness, Stephen, was murdered, I was right there holding the coats of the murderers and cheering them on. Kill them. Kill that believer. Kill them in the name of the Lord. They preaching this resurrection stuff. Kill them. Right there holding the coats of the murderers. It's Paul talking, y'all. Cheering them on. And now they see me totally converted. God Almighty. <laughs> y'all don't know when to shout. I tried to give all that to y'all. That, that was the shouting phrase right there. And now they see me totally converted. Man, good God Almighty. I'm going to preach that. I never saw that before. I'm going to preach that. I'm totally converted. I feel God. I'm a, I got up off of that one. That made me feel good. I'm going to preach that text. I never saw that right now. They saw me dragging people out of churches, sending them to prison, killing folk, laughing at folk, holding coats, cheering them on. But now, the same person they see doing that, they see me totally converted. So if God can do it for me, God Almighty, he can do it for anybody. My God, so he found common ground. He didn't glorify in his past. And then thirdly, Paul does not promise a life of ease to those who believe. He doesn't promise a life of ease to those who believe. Let's pretend uh, we had a Christian, you had, you're my audience at my podcast. You're in my talk show. Let's just pretend. The host is immaculately dressed. Hair perfect. Yeah, I know I'm not talking about me because I ain't got none. And it's all smiles. Well, today is a special day for the Christian Health and Wealth Show. We're going to have a very special guest. He has uh, done more for the cause of Christ than any other man. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please help me welcome St. Paul the Apostle. Well, the audience uh, is stunned just like you are. <laughs> the camera focuses in on rather small man dressed in a ragged tunic, faces sunburned and wrinkled. He looks like someone who spent a lot of time outdoors. And all eyes follow him as he slowly walks across the set. 
The, so, the host says, it's a real thrill to have you on the show, Paul. Or should I call you saint or apostle? Which, which do you prefer? Paul said, well, just Paul. That would be fine. Host says, well, um, Paul, uh, we're all eager to hear what you, um, a great servant of the Lord, might have to say to us. So tell us about the wonderful things that happened to you when you invited the Lord Jesus into your life. But Paul says, well, let's see. First of all, uh, I was struck blind. I got over that. But then somebody tried to kill me and had to escape out of a window, lowered down in a basket. Then uh, they stoned me, threw me in jail, and then beat me with rods. The host said, uh, Paul, I think you misunderstood. Tell us what the Lord has done for you. Paul said, that's what I was doing. Then the Romans arrested me. I was shipwrecked. I got bit by a snake. A night and day I spent in the deep. The host said, excuse me, folks, excuse me. It's time for our first commercial break. You see, Paul, my brothers and sisters, tells his listeners that being saved changed his life, but he does not tell them that things have always been good. Since he was saved, it hasn't been good, but it has worked for my good. So being saved is not always a, a, a road of ease. Being saved, you won't always be on the mountaintop. In fact, after you get saved, all hell will break loose in your life. Once the devil knows that you belong to God, he's going to set trap to get you messed up. He'll come at you with everything he can. Come on, say amen. amen. He'll come at you with the faucet, the sink, everything he can to get you distracted and get your eyes off of Christ. He will use sort of boisterous winds and all sorts of oppositions to get you off course. But I come to tell a 15 of you, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. You got to learn how to beam in on the promises of God. Because the promises of God is yes and amen. You got to learn how to tell that devil, I believe God against all odds. Because the enemy will put traps against you, but God would allow the enemy to put traps against you to increase your faith. To make sure what you say you got is genuine. So when I get saved, I will go through hell, but I will overcome. When I get saved, people will walk out of my life, but God will send 10 more people in. When I get saved, I get hurt. I'll be abandoned. I'll be forsaken. But thanks be to God, he will never leave me nor forsake me. For the Bible says, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the age. And I need about 15 of y'all, I'd make 16, can testify. You'll go through hell when you get saved, but you'll come up on top when you belong to God. I say you'll come out on top when you belong to God. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, you got the upper hand. You got the upper hand. In fact, Jesus says you will have trial and tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. And if you abide in him and he in you and he's a overcome, you'll come over every obstacle in your life. Can you look at your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, there's going to be tests, be tests. Trial, trial, trauma, trauma. And, tribulation. and tribulation. But declare this with me. I will, I will triumph, triumph over everything that's placed before me because God built me to handle what I'm in right now. Every trial, every stress, every struggle, Every strain, Every strain is working, is working for, my for my good. So don't get finished with me yet. God will do something else in me. This is the lowest you will ever see me again. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to the next level in God. So now it is the power on the screen. Of Christ that makes us different. It is the power of Christ that makes us different. Every testimony is a before and after account of the transformation of a human life by Jesus. 
Paul described the man that he was and the man that Christ had made him to be. Paul was not saying how good he was or what he had done, but how good Jesus is and what he has done. And so we see, fifthly, Paul presented his conversion as a fact, not as a feeling. Paul's story was based on facts. Things that others could attest to, not just how he felt. Look at the screen starting at verse 11. My last scripture. And when I could not see for the glory of that light being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came to Damascus. And one, Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. Continue. And he said, The God of our fathers have chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. Is that it, Chris? Should be a little bit more. 15 says, For thou shalt be his witness unto all men. Here it is. Of what thou hast seen and heard. I'm closing. But all I'm trying to say is, I got a testimony too. Yes. Paul doesn't uh, understand your testimony and you may not understand his testimony, but you got your own testimony. Yes. And if you don't want to tell it, let me tell it. Yes. He's been good to me. Yes. Have I got a witness here? Yes. He brought me out of darkness yes. into the marvelous light. Yes. Then translated me into his dear son. Yes. I got a testimony too. If you don't want to tell it, let me tell it. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And you ought to be able to testify too that things were bad and sometimes things still get tough. But God, for we walk according to the course of this world. But God, who is rich in mercy, wherewith he loved us with his great love. When Jesus healed the man in Luke chapter 8. He commanded him to return to his own house. Here it is. And tell what great things that God has done for you. And the Bible says he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. You ought to touch somebody right now before we close and tell them I got a testimony. And you don't know like I know just how good God's been to me. But God has been good to me. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Play something softly. Your testimony is your testimony. And can't nobody tell it like you can tell it. It haven't always been bad. It hasn't always been good. But you got your story. And I gave you homework last week to grab your phone and share your story. You'd be amazed how many people that's assigned to you that I may never reach because they're connected to your witness. And it's until you get out of the barn and go into the field, that fruit on that vine will never be picked. And it's up to you because it's connected to you. That person is your assignment. There's some people, Chris, you'll get out and never get. There's some people that 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 I'll get that you'll you'll never get. But when you go get what you get and I get what I get, God get everything. Amen. Come on, say amen. Because at the end of the day, it's about the glory of God. When we tell our story, we're not pointing to ourselves. Our job is to point people to Jesus. Because I was in it and I didn't bring myself out of it. It was Jesus. That's why when you hear me, I'm shouting and I'm hollering around at church and I'm saying stuff like God did it. That's a true story. That's a real exact testimony because there was no way in the world I could have brought myself out of that which I got myself into. Because you can get on and some of the stuff that we got into, it was self-afflicted. Come on, talk back to me somebody. Some of the stuff we can't blame God or the devil. Some of the stuff, it was bad, bad choices and decisions. I got myself there. I did it. 
And when you can admit that and when you can um, own it and when you can say, it is I, O oh Lord, I'm the one standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. So Father, I love you. I thank you for this opportunity to share Paul's story, his testimony. But I got a testimony too. So Father, help me to find common ground and not to glorify my past. And let people know even when we get saved, it's not going to be all easy. But you're the author and the finisher of our faith. So we look to you, Jesus. Have your way even tonight in the lives of those that are even watching. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. What I want y'all to do is get on your feet and clap your hands and give God praise for the word of God. Come on. Come on, let's do better than that. Hallelujah. Thank you for bringing us out. Thank you for doing it for us. If it had not been for you, God, we wouldn't be where we are today. It was nobody but you. And we trust you. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, those of you that are watching even online today, I want to offer Christ to you really quickly. We have our stewards that are here that will pray for you even on tonight. Those of you that are watching by way of Facebook, YouTube, Twitter or online, Bible says the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart, that the day is the day of salvation. Listen, beloved, Jesus died for you. The Bible says they hung him on the cross and he dropped his head in the lock of his shoulders and he died. The Bible says they took him off that cross and they buried him in a borrowed tomb because he knew that he would only use it for three days. And the third day, the Bible declares that he raised up on resurrection ground. And the Bible says he showed himself to many people and then he ascended unto heaven. And now he's on the right hand of the Father forever living, making intercession for you and me. But the blessed hope is this. He's coming back again. But will he find faith when he return? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If any man calls on the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. If that's you and you're in here tonight or you're online anywhere and you want to give your life to Jesus and you heard a testimony, you heard um, something from God tonight, I want you to put in the comment section right now, I'm coming to Jesus. Or put in the comment section, I'm giving my life to Christ. If that's you in here, you, you need prayer even on the night. I know we had Bible study, but this still is the house to prayer. And you walked in here, you need one of our counsel, our ministers to pray for you. You can come right now in house and say, you know what? I want to agree with you on some stuff. I want to agree with you on some stuff tonight. If that's you, you can come and pray right now. And those of you that are watching, I'm going to pray for you that God will continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. So Father, we love you. We thank you for those that are able to hear and have a spirit, Lord God, that may be attached to this word tonight. I pray, Father, that you would do something in them, through them, by them, with them, that would blow their mind, that you would open up the floodgates of heaven and send them the overflow of peace and joy and love and understanding and temperance and long-suffering and faith that they may walk this walk that you have given us. Thank you, Lord God, for doing it day after day and week after week and month after month and year after year. God, we're grateful for your work in us and through us. God, we thank you for our children. Cover them in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, and we give you glory tonight. We thank you tonight for you're the God of gods. You're the prince of princes. You're the fairest of 10,000. You're the bridge over troubled water. You're shelter in a time of storm. You're food when we're hungry. You're water when we're thirsty. And we give you glory tonight. We lift you up because you're El El Yon. You're Adonai. You El Shaddai. You're the God of gods and we give you glory tonight. Bless every marriage. Bless every single in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless every person that look for promotion and bonuses. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus for elevation in their life. Bless their finances in the name of Jesus. Bless their body from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Any manner of diseases, I come against it now. I take authority by the blood of Jesus. You're healed. You're set free and you're delivered. Come on, I need everybody right now. Clap your hands and thank God. Those of you that's watching right now, may the God of peace keep you all the days of your life. Be ye lifted up. Your everlasting doors. And God will come in.
in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, let's give God one more hand of praise and get ready to give Jesus name. I got a testimony to find common ground. We, we're going to have some, some, um, some training soon on some more evangelism. Want everybody to come out. We're going to do some skits and stuff. How to witness, put you on the spot. Glory to God, have different people, see if you can transform. You know the greatest, the greatest attribute of a servant is moldability. Moldability, say that, moldability. Come on, you okay, everything is good. Moldability, the greatest accent is being able to stay on the wheel and have God be able to change you and mold you at any time. I know some people say, well, commitment and loyalty and dedication, all those are good, but when you're moldable, that means you're standing in the hands of God, that I'm willing to change my countenance, change my um, approach, and be able to know how to change it to be um, common and to be uh, relative and to meet people where they are. Glory to God. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity even tonight to give. And I pray, Father, that you will open up the windows of heaven, pour us out blessings that we have no room to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you that are online, you have some giving destinations on there. Glory to God. And some of us need to go an extra mile offering. We got the budget this Sunday. And it was a little low, but some of you that um, can help us even tonight. Glory to God. Um, we're, we're not begging. We're just saying we want to take care of our church and be a blessing to uh, the ministry. Glory to God. And so uh, I don't know whether or not I mentioned it enough, but when we got those results back, it was a little... A little low, thanks be to God, amen, but we're, we're still grateful for your giving. Any first-time visitors? First-time visitors tonight. First-time visitors. You first-time visitor? This is first time right now, for real. Hi, baby. Hey, sugar. How you doing? Uh, is your first time here? No. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, I know I can't see. Oh, these day going lights. Amen. Glory to God. Any more announcements? I think I'm done. So, Father, we love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, who's back there? Oh, hi, Erica. Hi. How you doing? I didn't hear nothing she said. The part? Oh. Hey. Okay. Say, come in. Next Wednesday. What's next Wednesday? Re repeat it from, from earlier. Oh, the same? Oh, about, about Tim will pray? Yeah. You preaching next Wednesday? No. <laughs> <laughs> you tried it. They was like, no. <laughs> All right, I love y'all. We about to dismiss. Um, next Wednesday, no Bible study here. Everybody at the Temple Praise, 700 Southern Avenue. All right, Temple Praise. We are in spring conference. All right? And so if you want to make all week you can, um, I'm not making it mandatory, but I would certainly love for you guys to be there to Wednesday. But I'll be there all week. And I'm preaching that Sunday morning there. I'm one of the speakers. Um, it's five of us. Uh, but I'll be in my pulpit. So y'all don't come over there Sunday. Come here. And light it up so when I walk in, I can feel the anointing of it. All right? They don't have to work hard. So come with a praise. Come with a worship. Come with some excitement. I don't want to walk in here and y'all all dry and dead. Amen. So, so I need y'all to turn it up, up in here. Because I'm going to come in here on fire. I ain't going to change clothes. I might wear a three-piece and take off my suit and preach in my vest so I can put on my coat and come and rock this place. For the Lord, that is. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. All right, anything else? Oh, those of you that want to go to Chicago with me at the skate party June 19th, um, you're welcome. It's going to be off the chain. I'm tag-teaming with Pastor Reginald Sharp there at the Fellowship Chicago. And they're doing amazing things. And we'll be observing, observing June 10th. All right? So if you want to hang out with me, catch a plane, catch a hotel, get something to eat, go shopping with me, amen. I, 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 I got y'all because uh, I got the Hamlins right there with me. 
and, and, and my girl, you know, my daughter, Emily, you know, she from Chicago, so she gonna take me all around all the boutiques and all the shops. Yeah, all that, you know. I'm gonna go to the flagship Nordstrom's there. Yeah, downtown. Yeah, downtown. See, you know I'm talking now, right? Now, now some of y'all over there wasn't gonna say Nordstrom, Nordstrom. They start thinking about them Chanel bags and stuff. Glory be to God, them Louis bags. Amen. I feel it over here, right around there, right around Lisa. I, I felt that, felt that Louis spirit over there. Everybody standing, let's go. Thank you for your attentiveness tonight. Thank you for your, your show up. Thank you for your commitment to the Lord. It really makes a pastor grateful. A leader, if, had, if he has no followers, is just a man walking. And I'm, I can't be who I am without you. And I'm so grateful. So Father, we love you. We thank you tonight for what our eyes have seen, our ears heard. Certainly what has gone on in our hearts tonight. God, we have testimonies. How you brought us out of the muck and the mire. Yes. Set our foot on a rock to stay. And establish our goings. Thank you, Lord. Until we meet again, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give somebody a hug and tell them I love you, but I'm not trying to take you home.